President Bush said today the world would be safer without Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein. The subject didn't come up in this meeting. And, uh, and, and but having said that, uh, we're, we take all threats seriously. And uh, we will continue to consult with our friends and allies. I know there's this kind of intense speculation that seems to be going on, a kind of a, I don't know how you would describe it. It's, it's kind of a churning. Frenzy. Frenzy is how the secretary would describe it. <laughs> uh, but the subject didn't come up. Uh, we will obviously um, continue to consult with our friends and allies. And those are needed consultation. Not only will we consult with friends and allies, we'll consult with members of Congress. Several U.S. allies, including Canada and Germany, have said they need better evidence Iraq is developing weapons of mass destruction before they will support a military strike. The Obama administration said today that it believes the Syrian government has used chemical weapons, but it stopped short of saying that the regime had crossed the so-called red line, which would trigger a U.S. response. When mortars are being fired on uh, civilians and uh, people are being indiscriminately killed. Uh, to use potential weapons of mass destruction on civilian populations. A senior Israeli military intelligence official Tuesday pointed to the images streaming from Syria that day last month as one example of evidence chemical weapons are being used in Syria. A revelation no government has publicly stated with such certainty. The Assad regime has uh, murdered tens of thousands of people in your, your words. Does this rise to the level of a genocide? No greater decision and no more solemn burden than serving as commander-in-chief of the greatest military that the world has ever known. As President Bush himself has said, America must and will keep its word to the men and women who have given us so much. So even as we Americans may at times disagree on matters of foreign policy, we share a profound respect and reverence for the men and women of our military and their families, and we are united in our determination to comfort the families of the fallen and to care for those who wear the uniform of the United States. President Obama spoke at the Bush Library at around 10.40 a.m. Central Time this morning. Just about 25 minutes before he spoke, this was the news that crossed the wires. U.S. Defense Secretary Hagel says U.S. intelligence confirms to some degree of varying confidence that Syria has used chemical weapons on a small scale. Syria's Prime Minister survived a bomb blast targeting his convoy. It's thought 10 people died and 13 others were wounded in that explosion, which happened in a busy district. The blast took place today at 9 o'clock. It targeted the Prime Minister convoy in the area of East Mez West Mezze. Uh, it was uh, a bomb that was attacked, attached to a BMW Black uh, that was parked two days ago. Uh, in the way where the convoy usually goes from his house to his office. Usually the convoy goes from different routes every day, but this time uh, the driver chose this way uh, unintentionally. The uh, place uh, led to the killing of uh, uh, one of his bodyguards. That place took place near a kindergarten and a school. And thanks God this happened when where the children were inside, so one, only two of them were injured. Danny, before you go, just got 30 seconds. I wanted to ask you about that uh, bomb in Damascus targeting the Prime Minister. Uh, this bomb went off near a school, near a kindergarten. What does it say about maybe the, the, the tactics of the rebels here? Later, state TV broadcast images it says were of Al Halki chairing an economic committee meeting, seemingly unfazed. It supposedly came from the trusted Associated Press, 
Breaking news, two explosions in the White House and Barack Obama is injured. At least for a brief moment of time, people believed that the U.S. government had been attacked and the president had been injured. Less than 140 characters causing the stock market to drop 150 points almost immediately and sending the White House scrambling to reassure the nation. I can say uh, that the president is fine. I was uh, just with him. Traders and computers reacting to the tweet, programmed to respond to certain words online. Computers don't have emotions. Computers don't have intuition. Computers trade off of one variable and one variable only. Humans use their intuitions. We can look, we can see, we can feel and touch. Looking at this headline right now, we knew pretty quickly that it was not a true headline. Over the weekend, another media giant had its Twitter accounts compromised. 60 Minutes hackers tweeted, exclusive, terror is striking the USA and Obama is shamelessly in bed with Al Qaeda, forcing CBS to shut down its account. A Syrian rebel group took credit for the AP breach using a not very sophisticated technology. Rebels seized the convoy of around 20 UN peacekeepers near the Golan Heights Wednesday. The capture was announced in online videos and confirmed later by the UN. The rebels demand forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad pull back from a nearby rebel-held village called Jamla. We will not release them until after the Assad forces have withdrawn from the border village of Jamla back to their positions. And if they do not withdraw back within 24 hours, we will deal with these forces as prisoners. The UN maintains a force on the Golan Heights to monitor a decades-old ceasefire between Syria and Israel. But rebels accuse the peacekeepers here of helping Assad forces retake Jamla. <laughs> Uh, on a completely, completely different mission. So there is no reason at all under any circumstances, any kind of a sick imagination to try to harm. The militants uh, harm are those. admitting that they took these UN personnel to try and prevent an attack by Assad's loyalists. In other words, what we're seeing is that the rebel forces are using this UN team as human shields. Hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, we, uh, the UN personnel here, are safe, and uh, the uh, pre-Syrian army are treating us good and uh, nice. Uh, we cannot go home because uh, uh, the government of Assad uh, do not stop the bombing uh, to our family. We hope to see you soon, and we are okay here. Thank you. كل من يحمل السلاح ويعتدى يعتدي على المواطنين هو ارهاب سواء كانت قاعده ام غير قاعده فاذا اردنا ان نقسم الارهابيين لقاعده وغير قاعده هذا ممكن وهذا حقيقه ولو ان القاعده الان هي الحاله الطاغيه في سوريا من تحت عنوان جبهه النصره اما مصطلح المقاتلين المعتدلين فهو اسلوب امريكي للتبرير امام شعوبهم حاربت امريكا طالبان بعد حرب 2001 وبعد سنوات عديده اكتشفت بانها لم تحقق اي انجاز في افغانستان، الخسائر الامريكيه كثيره والكره الكره لامريكا يزداد والارهاب ينتشر اكثر في العالم. فارادت ان تبرر الحوار مع هذه المجموعات واستخدامها ضد بعضها او ربما لاهداف اخرى سياسيه فقالت بان هناك طالبان جيد وطالبان سيء. الان بالنسبه لهم الإرهاب المعتدل لا يوجد إرهاب معتدل هو إرهابي يسموه مسلح يسموه معارضة مسلحة هذا المصطلح يقدم لشعوبهم إعلاميا لأنهم ذهبوا بعيدا في تصوير الوضع بأنه صراع ما بين حاكم ومحكوم مظلوم هذه كانت الصورة طيب ظهرت ظهر الإرهاب ولاحقا ظهرت هوية هذا الإرهاب وهو إرهاب متطرف ولم يتمكن الإعلام الغربي من إخفاء ماذا يبررون بماذا يبررون دعم المعارضة؟ بماذا يبررون إرسال سلاح وأموال ودعم لوجستي تحت عناوين مختلفة دعم غير قاتل مساعدات غير قاتلة مساعدات مدنية بالأخير لا يمكن تبريرها إلا تحت عنوان مسلحين معتدلين. I've always appreciated this country, the people, leadership, and the courage that you represent and what has been produced in Israel. Uh, it is a model for the world, and the relationship between our two countries, uh, just as you have noted, is as strong uh, as it's ever been, not only uh, measured by the military to military and all the other metrics that apply to relationships, but as you also 
noted Prime Minister, it is based on common values uh, and respect uh, for others, and uh, that is the foundation of uh, any uh, relationship. Uh, you noted that uh, the region um, uh, is uh, not getting any less complicated. Uh, this is a difficult and uh, dangerous time. Uh, this is a time when uh, friends and allies must uh, remain close, closer than ever. But I believe together, working with our allies uh, and our friends, uh, we will be able to do what is right for uh, your country, my country, and make uh, this region a better region and a more secure region. It's absolutely clear that our partnership remains stronger than ever. I came here many, many years ago as a young child, managed to get lost in London Zoo. I want to thank somebody for finding me. Kerry's 11-day trip takes him to nine countries, England, Germany, France, Italy, Turkey, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. We are determined that the, superior, the Syrian uh, opposition is not going to be uh, dangling in the wind, wondering where the support is or if it's coming. And we are determined to change the calculation on the ground for President Assad. I think that there is a change that has happened recently. I think if any person in this country and in Syria, not particularly and not interested in the political process, will say that these things are connected to the time. And the president of the president, who is the president of the president, is clear that this issue is not a serious issue. I come to Obama and the government and Kerry and the United States and the United States with this issue. وخاصة ما يحصل في درعا يعني لو ربطنا الأمور مع بعضها فهذا يدل على شيئين أولا يدل على أن العامل الخارجي هو عامل أساسي فيما يحصل في سوريا منذ اليوم الأول وهذا كان من الصعب إقناع الناس به ثانيا أنه كلما حققنا نجاحات سوف نشهد المزيد من التصعيد لأن تلك القوى الخارجية لن تستسلم فأنا معك هي العملية ليست مصادفة ولكن من الخطأ ألا the support, the military and security support that it enjoys from the United States, uh, it reflects a very deep alliance between our two countries in the defense of our common interests and our common values. Nowhere are these uh, values and interests challenged more than by the arming of uh, uh, terrorist groups by Iran with sophisticated weapons. And equally, Iran's attempt to arm itself with nuclear weapons. This is a, a challenge that Israel uh, cannot accept. And as you and President Obama have repeatedly said, Israel must be able to defend itself by itself against any threat. A senior Israeli military intelligence official Tuesday pointed to the images streaming from Syria that day last month as one example of evidence chemical weapons are being used in Syria. According to our professional assessment, the regime has used deadly weapons against armed rebels on a number of occasions in the past few months. For instance, on March the 19th, 2013, victims suffered from shrunken pupils, foaming from the mouth, and other symptoms which indicate the use of deadly chemical weapons. The type of chemical weapons was likely sarin, as well as neutralizing and non-lethal chemical weapons. A revelation no government has publicly stated with such certainty. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said he asked Israel about the general's comments. I talked to Prime Minister Netanyahu this morning from here. Uh, I think it's fair for me to say that uh, uh, he was not in a position to confirm that in the conversation that I had. For many months, rebels have released videos. They say show the weapons have been used against them and civilians. The regime denies that and has showed video of its own, accusing rebels of the same. CNN was not able to independently verify the authenticity of any of the videos. The Brigadier General's statements come just a day after Israel's Minister of Defense and the U.S. Secretary of Defense met in Israel for the first time. And when asked if chemical weapons had been used, neither said yes. I want to read a statement because I think this is going to consume most of your attention as it has the last uh, couple of days. Uh, this morning, the White House delivered, delivered a letter to several members of Congress. 
on the topic of chemical weapons use in syria the letter which we made available to you here shortly as soon as george gets it we'll get to you states that the u s intelligence community assesses with some degree of varying confidence that the syrian regime has used chemical weapons on a small scale in syria specifically the chemical agent sarin as i've said the intelligence community has been assessing information for some time on this issue and the decision to reach this conclusion was made within the past twenty four hours and i've been in contact with senior officials in washington today and most uh, recently the last couple of hours on this issue we cannot confirm the origin of these weapons but we do believe that any use of chemical weapons in syria would very likely have been originated with the Assad regime. رأى أمه وإخوته الصغار يقتلون أمام عيني فقالوا له لا تتحرك رأى بيته يهدم من فوق There is at the same time some evidence emerging that rebel fighters might be allegedly planning some kind of chemical attack on Syrian President Bashar Assad's supporters. There is a video that has been posted online on Thursday. Now it does show what is thought to be a rebel fighter feeding chemical weaponry to rabbits and within a minute those rabbits die. This is in fact what the video has to say. You will die like these two rabbits, you enemies of Allah. Do you believe it now? We will kill you all with our chemical and biological weapons. Look for yourselves. If you see these rabbits, they inhaled chemical weapons for one minute only, and they're dead. Your destiny will be like them because you are supporters of Bashar al-Assad. God is great. God is great. Wait and see. We are from the Ari Asasa chemical battalion. We will kill you with our chemical weapons. The video has not been verified. This is an important point to make, but certainly the message it sends out is ominous. War's chemical romance, a love affair that goes back centuries in Western and Middle Eastern history. From the Germans' use of chlorine gas on the French during the Battle of Ypres in 1915, the United States' use of Agent Orange on civilians and combatants alike in Southeast Asia, and the Israelis' use of white phosphorus on Palestinians in Gaza, all events justified or denied by their respective users. Today, all of these countries accuse the Syrian government with the use of chemical weapons. Ten years after the use of chemical weapons of mass destruction by U.S. forces in Iraq, its next-door neighbor, Syria, is accused of using a different kind of chemical. ...concern that the Assad regime may be preparing to use chemical weapons against its own people. In December of 2012, an unnamed Pentagon official stated to NBC that there was no evidence the Syrian government had used or were in the process of mixing chemical agents. That same month, the Syrian government was threatened by a group calling itself the Chemical Brigade of Alri Asasar. In March 2013, questionable intelligence would be used to implicate the use of chemical weapons by government forces in Halep. Can you confirm, based on information you have seen, that the Syrian government has, in fact, used chemical weapons, or are you simply saying there's a probability that they may? Uh, I think there's a probability that they may, but we, Charlie, we have a whole history here now that's not looking very good. So we know in the past public reports have shown that they've taken chemical weapons and configured them in a way that they could be used at a moment's notice. Uh, we, we know for a fact that happened. Uh, we have, there has been f some forensic evidence uh, that at least small quantities may have been used in the past uh, and then you have this exchange of, uh, of conversation between the opposition uh, and the government about the use of chemical weapons. Between the 22nd and 25th of April, seemingly separate events would build storylines of five different countries, the United States, Turkey, Israel, France, and the UK. Last week I ordered the deployment of a U.S. Army headquarters element to enhance this effort in Amman. 
These personnel will continue to work alongside the Jordanian Armed Forces to improve readiness and prepare for a number of scenarios. Through our Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, Department of Defense personnel and our interagency partners are also working closely with Syria's neighbors, including Jordan, Turkey, and Iraq, to help them counter the threat from Syria's chemical weapons. As part of this effort, the Department of Defense is funding over $70 million for activities in Jordan, including providing training and equipment to detect and stop any chemical weapons transfers along its border with Syria, and developing Jordanian capacity to identify and secure chemical weapons assets. President Obama has made clear that if Assad and those under his command use chemical weapons or fail to meet their obligations to secure them, there will be consequences and they will be held accountable. The Department of Defense has plans to place in place to respond to the full range of chemical weapon scenarios. The U.S. military is constantly updating and adjusting tactical military planning to account for the rapidly shifting situation on the ground and to prepare for additional new contingencies not only those associated with the Syrian regime's chemical weapons, but also the potential spillover of violence across Syria's borders that could threaten allies and partners. While I cannot discuss specific plans in an open session, we have been developing options and planning for a post-Assad Syria, and we will continue to provide the President and Congress with our assessment of options for U.S. military intervention. We are in no doubt that the gas was used. Why? Well, on the one hand, the journalists from Le Monde, to whom we are very grateful, supplied us with samples which we had analysed. And then there was another case, we went back through the chain of events and we analysed those other samples. And the lab's conclusion was clear, it was sarin gas. While deciding who will lead Syria in the future, no efforts are made to ask the people whom they wish to lead their country. Instead, at least five foreign countries make it clear the decision belongs strictly to the West and its allies. And everybody in the population in Syria loves uh, our president and we support the president. But you are two things uh, very lie about Syria. Well, I didn't lie, it's my first day here. No, you are lying because everybody here, the population, 23 million uh, persons from Syria, love uh, Bashar al-Assad and support Bashar al-Assad. But I'm not making it up, there are pictures of No, you are, you are, you are, but there are pictures. You are On the 22nd of April, New Defense Secretary Hagel visits Israel, where extensive talks were held on various topics. One of those topics involved Syria and its chemical weaponry. 24 hours later, an Israeli Brigadier General announced that their intelligence had discovered the use of chemical weapons by the Syrian Arab Army. At that time, there was no comment from Defense Secretary Hagel. 48 hours passed, and on the 25th of April, Hagel's announcement echoed that of Israeli intelligence. With the Syrian rebel Takfiri forces still suffering heavy defeats throughout 2013, especially in Qusair, the army of rebel fighters by Western forces becomes an overnight talking point. General Salim Idris, formerly of the Syrian Arab Army, Idris departed to the rebel faction and became a spokesman for the group. The U.S. government is concerned that these weapons that you're asking for could fall into the hands of extremists with ties to Al-Qaeda. How do you guarantee them that that won't happen? Uh, it is very simply. We have a, a very good organized structure in our command. Uh, and I can, uh, under my responsibility, give any kind of guarantee that these weapons and ammunition will not fall. Uh, in uh, the hands of extremists, if they, if there are extremists. Yes, there was to be no guarantee U.S. weapons would not end up in the hands of terrorists. While the people of the West strongly oppose arming various rebel groups in Syria. The President of the United States said that this would be a red line if they use chemical weapons. The President of the United States has now told Senator McCain suggests the answer to this problem 
as to unite all Syrian rebel groups into one under General Idris. We know that Senator McCain has pushed uh, for arming the rebels. Well, he went there to talk with armed rebel commanders inside Syria. We've spoken to an activist who organized and participated in the trip. We know that he was on the ground for about an hour. He met with rebel commanders. Uh, most prominently, he met with the leader of the Free Syrian Army, General Salim Idris, and they really discussed a whole issue, uh, a whole series of issues from Hezbollah's involvement with the conflict to the growing problem of extremism within the rebellion. And both Idris and McCain uh, reportedly agreed that the best way to deal with extremism would be to try to unite uh, the rebels under the command of General Idris, who's a moderate, and to arm General Idris. Are there any weapons you are not comfortable giving them? I am, I am comfortable with giving them whatever the weapons they need to defend themselves against the onslaught of Russian weapons of the most sophisticated kind, Iranian weapons, uh, and the kinds of uh, unequal battlefield that we are in today. And I am absolutely convinced that we need uh, to have heavy weapons, both anti-tank and anti-air. In May of 2013, UN investigator Carla Del Ponte stated that chemical weapons could have possibly been used by rebels, contradicting the official stance of the West. During our investigation for crimes against humanity and war crimes, uh, we collect some witness testimony that, uh, that made to appear that uh, some uh, chemical weapons were used in particular nervine gas and what was uh, what appear on um, um, to our investigation that uh, that was uh, used by the opponents by the rebels and we have no no indication at all that the government Syria uh, the authority of the Syria government have used chemical weapons of course uh, now, the, the special commission uh, that the Secretary General put in place will, uh, uh, will investigate and, uh, and tell us what it is uh, exactly. But uh, I was a little bit stupefied that uh, uh, the, first, the first indication we got, uh, they were about uh, the use of uh, nerving gas by the... Unlike the Israeli intelligence information furnished to U.S. officials in April, Trapante's findings were immediately excused by Press Secretary Carney and the White House. The commission itself, the Independent International Commission of Inquiry on the Syrian Arab Republic, has put out a statement clarifying that uh, the commission has not reached any conclusive findings regarding the use of chemical weapons in Syria or who used them if they were used. The uh, fact of the matter is, as we have said, and I have said many times, uh, we are highly skeptical of suggestions that the opposition uh, could have or did use chemical weapons. Uh, we find it highly likely that any chemical weapon use uh, that has taken place in Syria uh, was uh, done by the Assad regime. Uh, and that remains our position. However, three days later, Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan had this to say. It is clear that the regime has used uh, chemical weapons, I mean missiles. Directly contradicting the statement from the White House, that no conclusion had been made at that time on who used chemical weapons. And three weeks after PM Erdogan's interview, an arrest was made in Turkey that would break the case of chemical weapons wide open. Turkish special anti-terror forces have detained 12 people. That's what we know. They are suspected of having links with the Al-Nusra Front, which is the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Syrian rebel group aimed at toppling the Syrian president Bashar Assad. Now, the group was seized in southern Turkey, and that is according to local media reports. The media also saying that they carried a two-kilogram cylinder with the nerve agent sarin. Now, Turkish authorities haven't yet commented on this report, and we are waiting to hear from them. Going back to December of 2012 and the gassing of two rabbits, some of the labels on these chemicals are from the company Tekum, a chemical company based in Turkey. A New York Times article from June of 2012 alluded to the fact that CIA officers were in southern Turkey attempting to keep weapons out of the hands of terrorist groups. 
However, Tech 50 fighters are seen in videos from 2013 with more advanced weapons they obtained after the New York Times article was published. The presence of the CIA and known terrorists operating in the same area at the same time gathering more of the same weapons the CIA officers claimed they were attempting to stop. There's a moment to try to tip the scales and we believe that moment is now. Menendez and his Republican colleague Bob Corker sent a bill to the Senate floor that would provide weapons to a select group of moderate rebel fighters. It's the farthest Congress has gone yet. Corker said the U.S. must help the moderates or risk having extremist forces take over if Assad falls. It would be very harming to U.S. national interest to have a country uh, that has chemical weapons there, compounds throughout the country, uh, controlled by extreme elements like al-Qaeda. On May 21st, the Menendez Corker bill was passed with a vote of 15 to 3. The Surya Transition Support Act of 2013. Section 4 states the goal is for the U.S. to engage with opposition groups that reflect U.S. interests and values, and to recognize groups such as the Sudan Opposition Coalition, legitimate successor groups, and appropriate subgroups as representatives, not defining in particular what appropriate subgroups mean. Section 501 speaks of the U.S. providing lethal and increased non-lethal assistance to vetted elements of the Sudan opposition and defense training provided by the United States to particular units of the Free Sudan Army and other Sudan entities opposed to the government of Bashar al-Assad. So you disagreed with some of the decisions that were being taken that you were being asked effectively to sell to the Syrians because they were using you as the salesman. That's what you're implying. تماما امور عديده انا لا اوافق عليها وهناك اتفاقات غامضه بالنسبه لي واظنها ليست مناسبه للشعب السوري موزاكتي the SNC president for about 4 months quit in April 2013 the resignation comes after a plea to the United States to remove Al Nusra Front from a list of recognized terrorist organizations feeling undermined Khatib felt Al Nusra had played an important part in some battles and was popular with some Sudians. A direct link from the SNC to Al Nusra, Al Nusra to Turkey, and Al Nusra to Al Qaeda, and Al Qaeda to the United States. And finally, in June of 2013, President Obama chooses yes on weapons and military training to rebels. America now says it will send weapons to the rebels, small arms, not the rockets needed to take out tanks or planes. Tonight, we met a top rebel leader who says that's not enough. The weapons won't be good enough for us to win, he said. I'm afraid they'll just make the war go on longer. The Obama administration has been hesitant to offer bigger weapons, knowing how disorganized these rebel forces are and recognizing that some of the strongest elements among them have sworn allegiance to al-Qaeda, the fear being that some of these American weapons could easily fall we into the wrong Al hands. There. We have Hezbollah. Uh, remember, Hezbollah has fired already thousands of rockets into our cities. It's committed to our destruction. So is al-Qaeda. Uh, there are jihadist elements, uh, uh, believe it or not, in addition to them inside Syria, the, the worst uh, Islamist radicals in the world. So obviously we're concerned that the weapons that are uh, groundbreaking and could change the balance of power in the Middle East would fall into the hands of these uh, terrorists. And we always reserve the right to act to prevent that from happening. Like when in January where Israel struck a Syrian government weapons convoy said to have been heading to Hezbollah in Lebanon. Well, I'm not confirming uh, news reports. Uh, well, Ehud Barak basically did. He, when he was asked about it, he said, well, when Israel says something, it means it. But I keep telling, uh, frankly, that we said, and that's one another proof that when we say something, we mean it. Well, I'm the prime minister, and I, I tell you that I, uh, 
I prefer to just state our policy. That's our policy. And it's clear that uh, this is a serious challenge. By the way, not only to us. I mean, if chemical weapons fall in the hands of uh, uh, Al-Qaeda, that's a challenge to Britain. It's a challenge to Europe. It's a challenge to every Arab uh, country in the Middle East. What did you say to David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, in your talks? Did you urge him not to lift the arms embargo against arming the rebels? Well, whatever I said to him was said in a private context. And uh, I, I can assure you that we see eye to eye with the, the British government about uh, preventing further terror and bloodshed in Syria. Uh, it's a complicated picture because, it's, uh, because you have bad fighting the bad. Israeli aircraft have entered Syria and have apparently dropped bombs. This is just happening. Israel has openly intervened in Syria for the second time this year. This according to U.S. officials. They say Tel Aviv has carried out another bombing run on a target inside Syria. Uh, this uh, following a previous strike. Huge explosions shake the Syrian capital, Damascus. The government is blaming Israel for the multiple rocket attack. The assault comes in the wake of extensive military operations by the Syrian army, with the foreign-backed insurgents suffering heavy defeats. That's just confirmed with a U.S. official that the Pentagon does believe that Israeli warplanes did cross into Syrian airspace overnight and dropped uh, several munitions munitions, bombs, if you will, on a warehouse that was believed to be uh, containing conventional weapons. It was not a chemical weapons facility, I'm told. Syrian security forces reject the claim that Israel pounded military sites. The area is 99 percent populated by civilians. First, this facility is for chickens and cows, and there are factories for cement, water, metal recycling, and a tea and gas station. What I have said in the past, and uh, I continue to believe, is, is that the Israelis justifiably uh, have to guard against the transfer of advanced weaponry to terrorist organizations like Hezbollah. On Saturday, Syria's president made a rare public appearance at Damascus University. Bashar al-Assad urged his supporters to carry on as usual to defeat the opposition. Throughout history and across cultures, terrorism has been the weapon of the cowardly. That's why they attacked the students and the teachers. But once they saw the Syrian military, those cowards fled. When we live our life and have as much normal life in the country, they will break down. They said they couldn't penetrate uh, without great cost Syrian air defenses. I think didn't the Israelis just kind of blow a hole a mile not, wide in I'm, that? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure they went into Syria. Are you sure they went into I'm Syria? I'm sure they the took US? out. I'm sure they took out uh, assets of, of Assad's in Syria, which is exactly what we could do with cruise missiles. The aftermath of Sunday's Israeli air and missile strikes against Syria. This time, Tel Aviv targeted an area near the capital, Damascus. The Israeli aggression has also drawn condemnation from Iran, Egypt and the Arab League. Iran has called for regional resistance against Israeli aggression. Egypt has described the attacks as aggression and the Arab League has called on the UN to take action against Tel Aviv. That's right. This was reported uh, this evening in the uh, Wall Street Journal. It says that Israel has warned the U.S. that a, a Russia deal is imminent. Basically, Russia is going to sell reportedly uh, advanced S-300 ground-to-air defense missile batteries. Persuasion for Vladimir Putin as the United States and the United Kingdom work towards getting the Russian president to negotiate over Syria. A longtime Syrian ally, Moscow announced last week it was still set to deliver weapons to Syria under existing contracts, something that has Israel concerned. But anyone who provides uh, weaponry, most advanced one, to terror organizations is simply siding itself in with terror but is going to promote an increased instability here in the Middle East. Specifically, Israel's worried about the possibility Russia could send Syria its S-300 missile platform. A powerful anti-aircraft system with a range of up to 200 kilometers, it would massively boost Syria's ability to take down anything that enters its airspace. Given Israel's recent airstrikes on weapons convoys there, they say were bound for Hezbollah, 
it would put their planes at vastly increased risk. Only a quick cessation of the military conflict can prevent a negative scenario. At this sensitive moment, it's particularly important to avoid any action that could destabilize the situation. Peace is made only by the strong ones, only by those who are able to defend themselves. And our aim is to defend our people, as we always do. Now the talks came amid concerns that Moscow would soon provide Damascus with advanced missiles. so what happens next? There are reports that Israel itself has reached out to some of the rebel groups. Now, if we there are did, reports you're even arming some of them. If we did, uh, did and, you? I'm, and I'm not confirming that we did, and I'm, I'm, I'm not getting into that now. It would make sense to be in touch? Well, if we did, I, you know, it wouldn't make sense to talk about it, even on the BBC. You know? and, uh, and I'm not confirming that we're doing that. But we're very careful. I said that the arming of rebels presents the question of which rebels and which arms, and that's a very complicated question for every country, including my country, Israel. Is Israel planning a more aggressive military operation in Syria? We're not aggressive. We don't seek uh, military confrontation, but we are prepared to defend ourselves if uh, the need arises. And I think people know that what I say is uh, both measured and serious. Obviously, there are options that are available to me that are on the shelf right now that we have not deployed. Uh, and you know, that's a spectrum of options. Uh, you know, as as early as last year, I asked uh, the Pentagon, our military, our intelligence uh, uh, officials to prepare for me what options might be available. Uh, and I won't go into the details of what those options might be. Yeah, I do uh, military but, options to our senior civilian leaders. And um, with uh, the, the, the outcome identified, I can produce a military option to achieve. His nation's military is prepared to strike Russian weapon shipments to the Syrian government. That warning comes after a top Russian official said his nation reserves the right to provide Syria with advanced air defense missile systems, similar to this one. Israeli officials have repeatedly voiced concerns that Syrian weapons could end up in the hands of their enemies, including the militant group Hezbollah. All this as the United States and Russia try to bring the Assad regime and opposition leaders to Switzerland for talks and one day after the European Union agreed to lift its arms embargo on the rebels. Israeli troops over the border in Syria, their mission. This is the battlefield on the left-hand side, a rebel village on the right, a pro-government village, and they've been trading mortar fire back and forth all day. It helps to understand the geography. Those villages are just a couple of hundred yards here from the Israeli border, and you can see the border road there. Our camera is captured for the very first time Israeli commandos coming back from inside Syria on a mission. The Israelis have been very worried about extremists, especially those linked to al-Qaeda, using the unrest inside Syria to launch attacks here against the Jewish state something Israeli officials say they are willing to do whatever is necessary to prevent. Israel isn't taking any chances. For the first time in nearly 40 years, Israel deployed its forward artillery to provide constant response capability. In recent weeks, Israel has been reinforcing their positions here with heavy armor. This Merkava tank just came in. The very fact that it's here is in violation of Israel's ceasefire agreement with Syria, an agreement which for all practical purposes has been ripped up given recent developments.
اخرى عن مدرعة من نوع جيب بعد قليل أيضا سنشاهد في هذه الصور أن عليها كتابات بالعبرية هذه الصورة هي صور حصرية لقناة الميادين حصلنا عليها منذ قليل وهذه كتابات في بالعبرية بدأنا نشاهد هذه الكتابات التي تشير وتؤكد أن هذه الألية ألية إسرائيلية وبطبيعة الحال كانت المسلحة في القصير وقد صادرها هذه هي الكتابات العبرية نشاهدها الآن على الهواء صادرها الجيش السوري ويبدو أن في هذه المدرعة هناك بعض الإصابات فيها تعرضت لإصابات من قبل الجيش العربي السوري كان مركوني ضمن زاوية لكن من خلال البحث بيّن أنه فيها مدخرات هذه المدخرات تدل على وجود أجهزة تعمل عليها نستدل من ذلك بأن هناك يعني فيه علاقة وطيدة بين الميليشيا المسلحة وبين العدو الإسرائيلي كما تنهى العربي هاي هي عربي إسرائيلي مثل ما أنتم شايفين أنتم يعني هون عليا إشارات Tensions flare in the Golan Heights. Syria says it destroyed an Israeli vehicle that crossed into its territory from the border region Tuesday. But Israel claims the vehicle was hit on its side of the Golan ceasefire line, prompting Israeli forces to return fire into Syria. The defense minister said Israel was not intervening in Syria's civil war. We are not allowing and we will not permit a spillover of fire into our territory, he said. Overnight, a Syrian army target was destroyed after such gunfire spilled into our territory in the Golan Heights. The front line has been largely quiet for nearly four decades. But Israeli airstrikes on targets inside Syria have spurred threats from Damascus as the conflict spills into neighboring countries. We're not intervening there in the civil war, but as for the situation in the Golan Heights, we do not allow and we will not permit a spillover of fire into our territory. In pursuit of that strategy, we've organized the international community. We have provided non-lethal assistance to the opposition. We have applied sanctions on Syria. What's happening in Syria is a blemish on uh, the international community generally, and we've got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect the Syrian people. I said earlier that the rule is the weakness in Syria, from the point of view of the violence and the violence. So, in this sense, the West is the weakness and the weakness. How do we understand that? In fact, the West is always used to use any weakness in the area, even if it was against this weakness. The reason is that they are using it in Mali, and they are using it in Syria, and they are using it in في ليبيا هي موجودة نفس المجموعة المتطرفة التي قاتلت في سوريا كانت مدعومة في ليبيا وهي نفسها التي تدعم مالي وقاتلوها في مالي هذا ما يسمى بازدواجية المعايير وأنا نسميه ثلاثية معايير ورباعية المعايير وإذا كان هناك ألف معيار فلا مانع لديهم هم يستخدمون أي ورقة تضر أي بلد لا يرضون عنه وبالتالي في حالة سوريا هم سعداء أن تأتي القاعدة إلى سوريا أولا يتخلصون من هؤلاء العناصر في مناطق مختلفة سواء كانت تحاربهم في ليبيا أو في مالي أو في أفغانستان أو في أي مكان تأتي إلى سوريا وهذا يخفف الضغط في مناطق أخرى من جانب آخر هذا يؤدي للتخريب في سوريا بغض النظر عن من ينتصر انتصرت الدولة أو انتصرت القاعدة أو غيرها بالمحصلة سوريا ستدفع الثمن وسيكون الثمن غالي ونحن نرى الآن نتائج التخريب بالنسبة للبنية التحتية وبالنسبة لتخريب الفكر في سوريا فهذا يعني حتى لو ربحت الدولة فستكون دولة ضعيفة هذا ما يهدف إليه الغرب من هذا من من هذا الدعم ولكن بنفس الوقت هذا الغرب لا يعرف أو ربما يعرف ولا يعي الآن بأن هذا الإرهاب سيعود إليه في أوروبا وبدأت الصحافة الغربية تتحدث عن مخاطر عودة هؤلاء ولكنها حقيقة كما مولوا القاعدة في أفغانستان في بداياتها ودفعوا الثمن غاليا لاحقا الآن يدعمونها في سوريا وفي ليبيا وفي أماكن أخرى وسوف يدفعون الثمن لاحقا في قلب أوروبا.
the people in the resistance who we trust. And we read this morning that Assad's forces are making incredible gains. You incredible talked gains. about Which a no-fly zone striking targets. What good does that do? Well, uh, first of all, it negates their air assets. In that kind of terrain and that kind of weather, air is a, is a decisive factor uh, in this kind of conflict. A, a decisive uh, factor in doing what? What's, what's uh, the well, overall Well, we take out strategy? the air, we establish the no-fly, no boots on the ground, no American boots on the ground. That's still that, a lot of risk, taking out that air. In fact, oh, in fact, the Russians have said they would move in well, if they move new in, anti-aircraft, very move, sophisticated. If they move that in, it's going to make it more complicated and certainly maybe gives us a little bit of skepticism about a conference, but uh, we can provide them with a safe zone, we can provide them a place to organize inside Syria. We can give them the heavy weapons that they need who's, who's to them? combat tanks. Who's they, them? I, I know them. I've met them. They're there. But they, how do you they, keep out good <coughs> rebels and bad because, rebels? You've because, got Al-Qaeda rebels thank running you, around. Martha, well. these are legitimate questions you're asking. But they are there. And you put them inside Syria. They Then they have a Benghazi. Then they have a place to organize, to, to identify the right people. These jihadists aren't, there aren't that many of them. They're just so good because they've been fighting all over the Middle East for all these years and they're not afraid to die. And in the most horrific of all, a man, a commander, a named commander from Homs of the Free Syrian Army, so-called, has himself videoed as he cuts open the chest of a dead Syrian soldier takes out his heart and eats it as a cannibal, takes out his liver and eats it as a wild beast. Although his comrade later clarified that it was not in fact the liver, but the lung. But we could still organize uh, a legitimate uh, and non-jihadist uh, group that are already there. They've got a great general. They've got a fine man who is uh, in charge of the Syrian, Syrian National Council. And you authenticated uh, this video. You reviewed it. You interviewed uh, this individual, Al Hamad, the man in the video, who appeared to be eating uh, the organs uh, of this dead uh, Syrian soldier. What was his justification, if you will? He had, he tells me that he had discovered on this soldier's person a cell phone with videos on it and he looked at one of the videos and it showed that soldier raping and abusing three women. Um, so he used that as justification. He said this is the revenge that he would take um, and he swore that this is what would happen to anybody that was in his turf that was, was doing I think such it extends such beyond just this group. I mean the whole Syrian war is a very gruesome, very it, it's got violence on an intimate scale, and a lot of it's being videotaped. Uh, so what this tells us about the rebels, this is one guy who did something very extreme, but we're seeing across the board from both sides torture, beatings, rapes. All of this is showing up on YouTube. It is videos that are used to send threats to the other side, defiance, revenge. During a press conference in Amman, Obama stressed the strategic importance of the relationship between Israel and Turkey and said he was happy that they chose to make amends. It's in the interest of the United States uh, that they begin uh, this process of, of uh, getting their relationship uh, back in order. And I'm very glad to see that it's happening. Netanyahu's phone call to Erdogan was the first conversation between the two leaders since 2011, when the Israeli prime minister offered his Turkish counterpart help after an earthquake struck Turkey. The reconciliation gives Obama a diplomatic triumph during his visit to Israel and the Palestinian territories, in which he offered no new plan to revive peace talks frozen for nearly three years. Two cars backed with explosives exploded near the entrance to a government building, killing and wounding dozens of people. Some of the injured are in critical condition. Raihali is a border town where thousands of Syrian refugees have been living since the start of the violence at home. Security forces are investigating the bombing, and the Turkish government officials are describing it 
is a politically motivated act of provocation. The Hache province is on the border with Syria. These actions may have been taken to provoke those sensitivities. The Rayhali bombing raises more concerns about security on the Turkish-Syrian border. Wherever you look in this town, there's grief and subdued anger. It's the worst attack on Turkish soil since the Syrian conflict began. It is a great pleasure to welcome my friend, Prime Minister Erdogan, back to the White House. I want to express our condolences to the Turkish people and the victims of the outrageous bombings that took place in uh, Rayhanla. Uh, as always, the United States stands with you as you defend your nation against terrorism. Uh, we want to thank you for the cooperation that you've provided us uh, in threats against the United States. We're going to keep increasing the pressure on the Assad regime and working with the Syrian opposition. The Prime Minister has been at the forefront of the international er effort to push for a transition to a democratic Syria without Bashar Assad. And we're going to keep working for a Syria that is free from Assad's tyranny, that is intact and inclusive of all ethnic and religious groups, and that's the source of stability, not extremism, because it's in the profound interests of all our nations, especially Turkey. What started as a peaceful sit-in against plans to build a shopping complex in Istanbul has turned into this, a wall of protesters trying to resist the police and injuries, arrests and damage to shops and businesses. The police use water cannon and tear gas trying to get people to leave, a response that's been criticised as being too strong. We are confronting very heavy police terror. Tear gas bombs are everywhere. I got stuck in the metro. They threw a gas bomb in and then closed the doors. Other people were also caught in the middle, including tourists and school children. The Interior Minister says nearly a thousand arrests have been made in more than 90 demonstrations across the country. After days of trying to break through the police siege, protesters take over Taksim Square. Thousands pack the popular area, describing this as a victory. The man who said he won't back down, just back down. But this needs to go on. We believe there is going to be a victory. We are looking after our urban zones. The AKP has no right over our urban space. We will protect our city and our rights. Protesters are telling us they now have three specific demands. The government must stop the urban development project in Taksim Square. They're insisting on an apology from the police for the way they behaved here. And they're insisting that Prime Minister Erdogan and his government must step down. Yani bu millete hizmetkar olan bir insana eğer diktatör yakıştırmasını yapıyorlarsa buna ben diyecek bir şey bulamıyorum. On gün boyunca Bakar'dan, ağırbaşlılıktan, aklı selimden taviz vermediniz. Şimdi buradan evlerimize dağılacağız. Bakar'dan, ağırbaşlılıktan, 
Well, before we get started, let me just make sure that I'm a good host. Uh, Ms. Prime Minister, do you want an umbrella? Because uh, we can uh, we, we can arrange it if you need it. You're okay? All right. I don't think that has convinced a lot of the people uh, for two reasons. One, because the group that was called to meet with the Prime Minister was not a really a representative body of the protesters here. They were handpicked by the government, so that didn't go too well with the protesters here. The Russian president was three hours late for his meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Syria was top of their agenda during talks in the Kremlin, but Vladimir Putin made no reference to the conflict in his opening remarks, preferring instead to talk about President Barack Obama. I hope to meet with him in person. In the near future, we'll have such an opportunity several times this year. What those opportunities will mean and what they could lead to was made clear when Kerry emerged with his Russian counterpart, the Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, after another round of detailed discussions. Instead of the increasingly heated war of words between the Kremlin and the White House that has marked their previous exchanges over Syria, the two men shared the same... It's impossible for me as an individual to understand how Syria could possibly be governed in the future by the man who has uh, you know, committed the things that we know have taken place. A big part of the population in Syria is afraid the regime will fall, not because it likes the regime, not because they are pleased with the ongoing horrible disaster in Syria because of which civilians suffer, but because they are afraid that if those fighting the Syrian regime will win, Syria will turn from a multi-ethnic, multi-confessional country where many religions and ethnic groups lived in peace into a country governed by extremists. We are accused, as others are accused, of sending fighters to Syria. Syria, but it's the Western and foreign intelligence services that wonder how weapons and foreign fighters are entering Syria. Do they get to Syria through Iran? Does Iran even have a border with Syria? Where do they go? How do they get there? Uh, the positions of, the, uh, of Russia and the United States closing in on Syria, as it was uh, repeatedly said at the press conference, still there is a feeling that they may be going in circles somewhat, uh, in particular because of the statements uh, by John Kerry about the uh, chemical weapons and about the possible uh, supply of weapons to the Syrian troops. Uh, if we remember last year when the Geneva communique was signed, uh, everyone was hopeful back then that this would bring the opposition and the Syrian government to the same nego negotiation table and that a peaceful solution will be found. This did not happen. Of course, we'll have to wait and see whether this will be the case this time. Uh, but definitely the initiative to call an international uh, conference at the end of this month was voiced by the sides. The question is whether this initiative will, of course, become a reality. We last met at the London Olympics and it's fitting that we're here in the next host city. And I'm looking forward to seeing the Olympic sites with you this afternoon. Britain and Russia share many interests, security at home and abroad, leadership in the G8, the G20 and the United Nations, and also building our businesses and our investment links so that we both thrive in the global race. Of course, it's no secret that there are issues where we differ. We don't duck these. We've had very frank discussions, as we have today. But a more effective relationship will help make, both, make people in both our countries safer and better off. We discussed the appalling and deteriorating situation in Syria 
80,000 lives lost, millions more fleeing their homes, the history of Syria is being written in the blood of her people. It's no secret that we have had differing views on how best to handle this situation, but we share fundamental aims to end the conflict, to stop Syria fragmenting, to let the Syrian people choose who governs them, and to prevent the growth of violent extremism. So I strongly support the conference that Mr. Lavrov and Mr. Kerry agreed this week to deliver a political solution, a solution which has a transitional government based on the consent of the Syrian people as a whole. Russia has been building up its naval presence near Syria in an effort to keep Western allies out of Syria's bloody civil war. This is uh, Russia's uh, largest uh, post-Cold War deployment of uh, its naval forces outside the, the waters uh, 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 immediately surrounding Russia. Um, we've had in recent months uh, between 10 and, and 15 warships uh, uh, near Syria in the Eastern Med. Right now we have 11 ships, including destroyers, intelligence collection uh, ships, frigates. The bottom line message is that Russia has a strong interest in Syria and that there's not going to be a solution to this problem uh, unless it has the blessing of Russia. Uh, you know, it is a message that there are Russians in Syria in force um, and that it has a uh, power uh, in that country. And they have a port there, a, uh, a, a, a naval base, and that is their only base or naval base in the Mediterranean so clearly they want to keep that right that's right and and this uh, the the deployments of these ships is a way of them sending saying we're not going to give up that base with regards to the supplies of weapons to the Assad government and as regards to who has the blood of the children and peaceful uh, citizens of Syria I, I believe you will not uh, deny that the blood is on the hands of the both parties, of both of the parties. And there's always a question, who is to be blamed for that? Who is to blame? I believe you will not deny the fact that uh, one hardly should back those who kills their enemies and uh, no, eat their organs uh, and all that is filmed and shot. Do you want to support these people? Do you want to supply arms to these people? So in this case, it has hardly any relation to the humanitarian and uh, cultural values that uh, Europe has been professing for centuries. In Russia, we cannot fancy such things happening. But if we speak calmly in cold blood, in a business-like fashion, let me draw your attention to the fact that Russia supplies arms to the legitimate government of Syria in full compliance with the norms of international law. We are not breaching anything. Let me emphasize that we are not breaching any rules and norms, and we call on all our partners to act in same fashion. One of the top tasks for the White House is to pressure Putin to stop supporting Syria's Bashar al-Assad, especially after announcing America would begin arming Syrian rebels. But ahead of today's meeting, the headline in the Irish Times reads, Putin warns West, do not arm Syrian rebels who eat human organs. Putin spoke in London yesterday, making reference to a video of a Syrian rebel allegedly eating the liver of a dead government soldier. They're trying to basically tell him, hey, you risk having no access to Syria, losing an ally in a regime, because they're trying to make the case to him that, that long term Assad's not going to be there, the entire regime may fall. And if you don't want al-Qaeda in charge, the more chaotic Syria is, the more chaotic everything looks over the next six months to a year, the, the greater the likelihood that somebody that neither the United States nor the Russians want in power ends up in power in Syria. And that's not good for his long-term play. So that, that seems to be the best argument they're trying to make to him. Uh, but it, had, it didn't work six months ago when they made this argument, and it doesn't sound like it's going to work today, but we'll find out. We have had detailed talks with the President of the United States. Практически по всем вопросам начали с экономики, говорили еще обстоятельно. Договорились запустить новые механизмы сотрудничества в этой сфере. 
We've agreed to launch new mechanisms of cooperation in this domain. В том числе на уровне представителя правительства Российской Федерации и вице-президента Соединенных Штатов. Including at the levels of the chairman of government of the Russian Federation and the vice president of the U.S. Подробно остановились на вопросах на вопросах безопасности. We have spoken in detail about the matters of security. Стратегического характера между двумя странами и в мире в целом. Of strategic security between the two countries and the world as such. Думаю, что у нас есть возможность идти вперед по самым чувствительным направлениям. I believe that we have an opportunity to move forward on most sensitive directions. Говорили, разумеется, и о проблемах, проблемных точках на планете, в том числе говорили о проблеме Сирии. We also spoke about problem spots on the planet, including Syria. В чем-то наши позиции еще не совпадают, но мы объединены общим стремлением прекратить насилие, прекратить увеличение количества жертв в Сирии, решить проблему мирными средствами, и в том числе с помощью переговоров в Женеве мы договорились подтолкнуть процессы мирных переговоров и побудить стороны сесть за стол переговоров, организовать переговоры в Женеве. Uh, and of course our opinions uh, do not coincide, but all of us uh, have the intention to stop the violence in Syria, to stop the growth of victims, and to solve this, uh, the situation peacefully, including by bringing the parties to the negotiations table in Geneva. We agreed to push the parties to the negotiations table. And with respect to Syria, uh, uh, we do have uh, differing perspectives on the problem, but uh, we share an interest in reducing the violence, uh, securing chem chemical weapons and ensuring uh, that they're neither used nor uh, are they subject to proliferation, uh, and uh, that we want to try to resolve the issue through uh, political means if possible, and so we will uh, have instructed our team to continue to work uh, on the potential of a uh, Geneva follow-up uh, to the first meeting. Что касается вопроса о Сирии, то у нас э, есть некоторые различия во взглядах по этому вопросу. Тем не менее, у нас есть общая заинтересованность в том, чтобы положить конец на Сирию, которая там имеет место, для того, чтобы, э, а также заинтересованность в том, чтобы обезопасить э, химическое оружие, которое может находиться в Сирии, чтобы предотвратить его использование и распространение этого оружия. Мы также говорили о том, что мы предпримем попытки, ведущие к разрешению этого конфликта мирным путем, и мы собираемся поручить нашим командам, нашим сотрудникам работать над тем, чтобы провести следующий, чтобы, чтобы провести следующий тур переговоров в Женеве. Uh, uh, to try to uh, continue to reduce tensions, uh, to uh, build on the work that we did with uh, New START, uh, and to lead the world uh, in uh, both nuclear security issues and proliferation issues. Uh, and one of the concrete outcomes of this meeting is uh, that we'll be signing uh, here the continuation uh, of the cooperation that was first established through the non-Luger program uh, to counter uh, the potential uh, threats of proliferation and to enhance nuclear security. And, and this, I think, is an example of the kind of constructive, cooperative relationship that moves us out of a Cold War mindset uh, into uh, the realm where, uh, by working together, uh, we not only increase security and prosperity for uh, the Russian and American people, but also uh, help lead the world to a better place. And, and we both agreed that, uh, uh, that uh, as you get older, uh, it takes more time to recover. И мы оба согласились о том, что, тем не менее, с возрастом все все труднее справляться с нагрузками. Президент хочет меня расслабить своим заявлением о том, что он старается, становится слабее. 
president wants to relax me with his statement at uh, the age uh, so. Thank you. still have some uncertainties about uh, what was used, what kind of chemical was used, where it was used, who used it. There, there is a probability that they used it, uh, and the very fact that uh, I believe they had intent to use it. Given news of this latest atrocity, do you think the pressure is now growing for some kind of military support, perhaps even intervention? I hope the American people don't have a whole lot of appetite for allowing radical Islamists to get chemical weapons. Just look at Boston. The only reason they haven't killed millions of, millions of Americans, they can't get a hold of the technology.